This is the Exchange Management Technical Video. I'm Ann Vu. I'm here with my teammate, Jim Lucy. And uh, what are we going to be talking about today, Jim? Well, today I wanted to talk about Exchange 2010 and the management tools that are available in the product. I um, wanted to talk about the Exchange Management Console, the Exchange Control Panel, Role-Based Access Control, and PowerShell. And then I wanted to take you through a couple demos on end-user self-service, some of the specialty administration features, and also the full IT administration lookout. That's great. So tell us about the Exchange Management Tools. Okay. So we have a breadth of Exchange Management Tools, the first being the Exchange Management Console. This is a 64-bit application that administrators get the full experience of Exchange, managing the organization, the servers, and the recipients. Uh, within this, they can also, if they have a, a hybrid model where they have some users in the cloud or, and some users on premises, they can use this Exchange Management Console to move users to the cloud and back again. We also have the Exchange Control Panel. This is, a new, this is new in Exchange 2010, and it's a web-based uh, management infrastructure that can be accessed via Internet Explorer, Safari, Firefox, and Chrome. And this is, this is great because it allows us to um, give administrators control um, for what end users might see mm -hmm. from a management perspective, what specialty administrators can manage, and also the full ad management experience. And the Exchange Control Panel is also RBAC aware that allows an administrator to tailor it based on the permissions that a, a user or administrator sees that they'll only see the features that they've been given permissions to. So how do they do this? Well, we do it via role-based access control. It gives the administrator the ability to assign tasks to a specific set user or set of users. And it, this take, took over from previous versions of Exchange where it was an AD ACL model for assigning permissions. It's a lot simpler with Exchange 2010. We make it easy where the administrator just defines the who, which is the user or set of users that are assigned the, the tasks, the where, which is like the organizational unit or the configuration scope for, for that user. Maybe it's North America um, users only. And the what. So the what is assigning the specific tasks of what that um, user or administrator would be able to control. So we've gone through EMC, ECP, and RBAC. So what about PowerShell? So Remote PowerShell gives administrators the ability to um, manage the Exchange environment from a command line. And really where that's beneficial is they have access to all the commands and parameters that Exchange has to offer. And they can also automate um, repetitive tasks via script. Maybe they have a bulk upload of um, bulk provisioning of mailboxes that they need to do. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that I can actually use Remote PowerShell for my Exchange Online account as well? Yeah, definitely. The, and actually, that's a great thing. When we built Exchange with Software Plus Services in mind, not only the ECP is available for um, tenant administrators to manage their Exchange Online environment, but PowerShell can be used for those tenant administrators to access and run commands and, and automate scripts remotely from their desktop. So how does that work? We have a user here, Eric, who's the administrator of their Exchange organization. He needs to set up a new PowerShell session that connects to the Exchange server. Mm -hmm. It goes and authenticates with IIS, mm -hmm. and then also with the Web Services Manager and the RBEC stack to determine authorization. What happens then is it determines what Eric's rights are, and he has the right to run these PowerShell commandlets, new mailbox, get mailbox, and set mailbox. What happens is a run space is created on the server, and it's transferred back to Eric, the administrator, on his local desktop. So he's now able to run those commandlets. He executes new dash mailbox with the name of Bob, mm -hmm. and that actually runs on the server, and he's given a pipeline back to control Bob's new mailbox via PowerShell. So that is, that is as simple as it is to actually create and um, execute commands in remote PowerShell. So now that we've gone through some of the management tool that Exchange 2010 gives you, let's dive into what they actually do. Oh, cool. 
Um, first thing I wanted to head this up when I before I demo here, I wanted to talk about some of the end user self service benefits. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to demo the ability for an end user to manage distribution groups and also to edit personal information. This user can also um, manage and see message tracking. And what we've seen from um, from this specific Forrester consulting report on the total, total economic impact of Exchange 2010, that organizations can save and reduce help desk call volumes by 10% with some of the um, capabilities built into Exchange 2010. I'm logged into Bob Kelly, and this is his Outlook web app. Okay. And we simply access the um, Exchange control panel by going to options. And this now, is just Outlook Web App that uh, end users would be able to access, right? Correct. Outlook Web App is the web-based um, access to their mailbox. Now when I'm in here, I'm in here as Bob, and I can see things that I can manage. And traditionally, it's been you know, setting out of office and, and setting um, inbox rules and, and that sort. What we, the capabilities with role-based access control give an administrator the ability to allow Bob to change personal information. Let's say Bob gets a new phone number, a new mobile phone number, and he needs to change that. So he changes his phone number, and as easily as that, Bob now has updated the global address list with his new mobile phone number, and he no longer has to call the help desk to make that happen. Bob also, with Exchange 2010, has the ability to manage distribution groups. He can see groups that he belongs to, as well as groups that he owns. In this particular case, he owns Fabricam Project Distribution Group. And in here, he, need, he can manage the ownership, membership, membership approval, which is a, a helpful um, feature, where he set it to owner approval. This sets a workflow when somebody requests to be added to this distribution group, it sends Bob a notification to accept or decline that user. What I'm gonna do is show how easy it is. Instead of calling the help desk to manage memberships, Bob can go in here and just add a new member to this. I'm gonna add Arno and hit OK, and it's updated. Now Arno is a member of that um, Fabricam project team. And finally, I wanted to show um, the ability for for Bob to do check the tracking of messages himself. Instead of calling the help desk to see if a message was delivered, he can type in here messages with a specific subject line, and it'll come up, and he sees the message messages that he sent, and he can see that those messages have been delivered. So again, these three specific features are common help desk support calls for organizations, and now they can push and enable the end users to manage them themselves. So I know that IT organizations have traditionally used a lot of custom code to modify ACLs or third-party tools to help with management of special roles. So what does Exchange do to help me manage uh, special users? Yeah, and that's the great thing about role-based access control. It makes it easy for an administrator to assign tasks to a user or group. Okay. And we have seen how people use Exchange. There are common tasks that they use, like editing personal information, um, creating mailboxes, um, doing e-discovery searches, being able to search mailboxes for information, um, the unified messaging role to manage voice. So um, what we've done is, out of the box, created some, some typical templates for roles that are created. And it allows us to. Um, to assign roles for these specific, like a compliance officer who just does mailbox search, um, and the HR manager. So that's really great. Let's see how uh, role-based access control works for specialty users. Okay. So what I've done here, I'm logged in as Arlene Huff, who is the compliance officer at Contoso Corporation. Right now, I see, just like I saw in, in the demo earlier with Bob, she sees her personal information. Okay. But because she's been given special administrative rights, she now has a, my, uh, an ability to manage her, the organization. And when in here, she's been only been given the keys to manage um, multi-mailbox search. Where a full administrator has keys to the entire castle, Arlene only has the ability to manage um, mailbox search and e-discovery. 
So right here, I have a search that's already been done, but it's as simple as Arlene going in and creating a new search. Maybe she's searching on the word tailspin, doing specific mailboxes she wants to search for. And in this case, Todd Meadows, who is the legal counsel, and, and Eric Ryan, who is on the support team. So I'm going to go through, and I'm going to, or Arlene is going to assign a name for this. And saving that. So you can see that this search is in progress, and there's already a search already completed right now. So I'm just going to open that specific search. Over on the, on the right side, we can see when that search was completed. Excuse me. We can see when that search was completed. We can also see the, um, the results and where they're sent to and the number of hits in there. And she can easily open that mailbox and see it in Outlook Web Access or Outlook Web App like she would before. So this also works for Exchange Online in the cloud as well as Exchange On-Prem, correct? Exactly, and that's the great thing what we've done with um, role-based access control. It gives us, managing our data centers, the ability to isolate the tasks and admin capability for a tenant administrator within an organization. Now that we've seen the experience for some specialty users, what's the full IT admin experience? Okay. So what I'm logged in here in the Contoso organization, I'm logged in as the administrator. And it's very similar to what we just saw with Arlene as the compliance officer, mm -hmm. except the administrator has full rights. They can manage users and groups. They can manage transport rules, journaling, delivery reports within the organization, and even phone and voice options, setting active sync policies. But where this is really helpful and where role-based access control comes in, makes it easy to assign these permissions, we have these administrator roles predefined out of the box. So what we did is we gave Arlene um, the ability to do discovery management. She only has the tasks to do mailbox search and apply legal holds on specific users. Now there are other common um, roles out of the box, like a help desk administrator. Eric Ryan, he's been given the ability to view recipients and user options and so forth. Now, that's the ability to create these specialty administrators. Now, when we gave Bob the ability to uh, manage distribution groups, yeah. that's up to an organization. They have control to change that. Some organizations may not want to allow their users to manage distribution groups. So I go to the default role assignment policy here. I can go, let me make this a little bigger. And I can go down and look at all the options that I can set as a group policy for end users. And I can uncheck the ability to manage distribution groups and distribution group membership. When I save that, Bob no longer has the ability to create distribution groups. Perfect. So that's if IT administrators want to manage groups somewhere else outside of the Exchange Control Panel. Correct. So I just gave you a look at um, the value of Exchange Management Console, the Exchange Control Panel, how RBAC ties that all together, and how we can access um, the Exchange environment via PowerShell scripts. That's really great. How do IT administrators learn more about some of the features that you've discussed today? Yeah. I have um, a list of resources here. First off, there's a total economic impact report from Forrester that's valuable to look at. Um, and when looking at PowerShell, Exchange Management Console, or role-based access control, that we have TechNet links, um, as well as the management technology page on Microsoft.com slash exchange. Thanks, Jim. For more information, please check out these resources. And if you're more interested in the end-to-end -end story, we're going to have additional videos as part of the Exchange Technical Video Series, including topics such as archiving and high availability. Thanks.